So our first speaker today is Gunnar Mills. He's a software engineer from IBM who maintains four repositories in OpenBMC, including the web interface repository. So he'll be talking to us today about Redfish on OpenBMC. Uh, Gunnar Mills from IBM. I'm going to talk about uh, Redfish on OpenBMC. Um, I'm going to start with what is Redfish and getting started with Redfish. I'm uh, going to move on to OpenBMC's Redfish implementation, uh, OpenBMC releases, and how they tie to Redfish, and then uh, finish with uh, Redfish data model. Uh, Redfish Sessions, and Redfish Major Collections. What is Redfish? Uh, Redfish is a industry standard uh, spec for hardware management. It's defined by the uh, DMTF, uh, Distributed Management Task Force. Um, the DMTF was formed in uh, 1992 uh, it has uh, many other standards, including uh, PLDM, uh, MCTP, uh, SMASH. Um, the Redfish Forum, or Redfish Group, was formed in uh, 2014 with the first uh, spec coming out in 2015. Uh, the latest is 2019.2, which is due out... Uh, this quarter, third quarter, 2019. Uh, 30 companies make up the uh, Redfish group. Um, there's two tiers. Uh, there's a, a promoter tier and a supporter tier. Uh, the top 10 companies there are promoter companies, and then the bottom 20 are uh, supporting companies. Um, and it's kind of uh, who you would expect in the system management, um, Broadcom, Cisco, Dell, uh, HPE, Intel, Lenovo, um, Arm, Google, uh, IBM, Western Digital. Um, and so the first release of Redfish uh, was focused on servers. Um, it was intended to meet the open compute projects uh, remote machine management requirement. Uh, and it's Build as a replacement for IPMI, a 20-year-old uh, standard, which, uh, as discussed yesterday, has some problems. Um, and there's a new uh, Redfish spec every four months, uh, and Redfish is working with several other organizations to further uh, expand the the spec. Um, and although uh, the first Redfish spec was focused on servers. It's grown. Um, it now includes uh, schemas for BIOS and disk and volume and PCI device uh, zones. So Redfish is a uh, REST API, uh, representational state transfer. Uh, it uses uh, HTTPS, uh, the web protocol, uh, a safe protocol. Um, it uses JSON uh, with its modern language support. And all of these are, are well-known, uh, widely used. Uh, so your system management um, then can be performed using the same skills and the same tool chain as uh, other IT tasks. Uh, Redfish uses uh, the CRUD operations from REST uh, HTTP methods. Uh, so POST for create. It also uses POST for action. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, GET for read, PUT and PATCH for update, and DELETE to delete a resource. Um, Redfish uses the open data protocol, uh, and it's usable by apps, GUIs, browser plugins, and scripts, uh, extendable, secure. And Redfish has 80 plus schemas, 2,000 plus properties. Uh, most are optional. Uh, so um, 
There's the Open Compute Project server and baseline management device profiles. You can target these for an implementation, and there's tooling around this. Um, and there's many open source tools around Redfish. Uh, there's Redfish Tool. It's a command line uh, tool for interacting with a, a Redfish API. And then there's the Redfish Service Validator. It's for uh, checking uh, Redfish implementation against the schemas. And so this is a uh, Redfish validator uh, run. Um, it's a recent OpenVMC master build. Uh, our current master in OpenVMC uh, passes with no Redfish validator errors. Uh, and we run the Redfish service validator uh, in CI against an IBM Power Systems Witherspoon. Um, and James was saying at the uh, APTS, uh, we were the only uh, implementation of Redfish to pass uh, completely without any Redfish validator errors. What? Oh. <laughs> um, I've included some links for getting started with Redfish. Uh, the first is the Redfish standard, um, and if your company is one of the uh, Redfish uh, forum members, uh, you can sign up here. Um, the second link is to the developer hub. Here you'll find things like the mockups and the schemas. Uh, the third link is the GitHub private repo for Redfish. Uh, to get access to this, you have to be part of the Redfish forum, so you'd use the first link to sign up. Um, and then the last link is a link to one of the mockups. It's the simple rack mounted server. Uh, this is just a few of the schemas uh, for Redfish. Uh, BIOS uh, certificate. Um, this is a screenshot of the uh, simple rack mounted server mockup. Um, it's uh, of the processor resource, and you see properties in here that you would expect with a processor data model, uh, processor architecture, uh, instruction set, uh, manufacturer model. Um, OpenVMC's Redfish implementation. Uh, BMC is our web server, and it's where the support for Redfish is being added. Um, Intel maintains BMC Web, uh, James, Ed, uh, and Ed uh, described BMC Web as a do everything uh, embedded web server. Uh, BMC Web is uh, configurable. Uh, Authentication, middleware, uh, virtual media, KVM over WebSockets. Uh, it exposes the DBus interfaces to REST uh, for now. Uh, I kind of talk about this more later, but we'll eventually move away from that. Um, and it's static file hosting for the, the web interface. Uh, BMC Web is async, and it replaces Foster REST server, a uh, Python-based web server. Uh, BMC Web uses uh, Boost Beast, and with uh, Redfish, we're adding a, a translation layer. So um, it means that changes to our uh, internal DBus APIs don't in impact uh, end users. <clears throat> And so um, OpenVMC is a collection of microservices that talk to each other through DBus. Um, and so which uh, microservices different companies use uh, vary. Uh, so for example, uh, IBM uses uh, Inventory Manager while Intel uses Entity Manager. 
And so uh, the object mapper um, does a few other things, but uh, it is used to discover uh, the service that implements a certain interface or a certain object path. And so uh, BMC Web uh, will first call mapper to uh, find the service that implements a certain interface. Uh, in this example, uh, BMC Web is calling uh, Mapper looking for the uh, inventory item CPU interface. And then the Mapper would return the service that is implementing that interface, and then uh, BMC Web would then call that service and get back the, all the properties. So with this, uh, we can use Inventory Manager and uh, other companies can use Entity Manager and BMC Web works for both. And so this is uh, uh, an example on a real system of calling a Git subtree to uh, return the service that implements this inventory.item.cpu interface. And then this is calling the uh, inventory uh, manager directly with a get all to return all the properties of that path. BMC produces the inventory, correct? Yes. So are there models that we are thinking that a, a, a excellent entity could basically program the inventory inside the BMC? Uh, can you repeat that? So, so envisioning a model where like you could, you could create a vanilla kind of a flavored BMC. And now if you want to give a flavor to the BMC, like, you know, it could run four processor, it could run eight processors, or it could run three accelerators, it could run two accelerators. How does the BMC know what the platform inventory is? So are you, um, is there any thought that a inventory can be programmed inside BMC using external entity? I mean, what are the thoughts behind that? Uh, so there are DBus interfaces have um, interfaces for things, CPUs, for uh, DIMMs, for everything. And so as long as you implement those interfaces for every single uh, for every processor, if you implement the processor interface, BMC Web will then expose all those processors on Redfish. Yeah, this was, I, I was trying to understand more from like, from system perspective. I mean, this inventory model, Redfish inventory model that we have, can it be consumed by BMC rather than being produced by BMC? Uh, not currently. I guess why why do you want to so 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 the envisioning is that right like you know you could you could take an inventory from one machine and you can apply the inventory on other machine to to kind of cross check the profiles like like uh, I could I could build a a plain kind of vanilla BMC and I could tell that the BMC should produce inventory based on this profile so basically it should render two processors it should render it should render Two GPU, it should render like a you know that storage kind of profile. So instead, BMC producing it, I'm I'm asking like, are there any thoughts where BMC could consume this inventory? Because what is happening is right now there are like custom models that everybody is producing, or at least like we are producing, and we are let B when we are kind of you know we are we are defining this to be consumed by BMC, but that's like all OEM models. So. Are there any thoughts in OpenBMC to kind of consume the standard Redfish inventory model so that the BMC can consume that and it can tailor it and it can produce it? Um, there's no plans on our end to do that, um, and I haven't heard of anything. So I think it means a set and patch. Currently, like in, uh, in IBM specific systems, uh, like so normally what happens, like we read it from the MRW, so it's a machine readable work, uh, workbook, and then we generate the full inventory. Uh, 
So this is like in the form of YML. Uh, it is there, which we, it's, a, it's a kind of configuration file. Yes. Yeah, I think a, is, is the use case for this that you're suggesting scenarios where the BMC can't necessarily detect a component, maybe BIOS can. BIOS tells the BMC about it, so the rest of the world is on. Uh, so exactly. Not, this can be from what divided. BMC discovers, someone has to tell the BMC. This actually works if you have a small scale concept. Yes. 100 components. <laughs> this would be right at the year. That's the best. Not a thing. So we had um, something in the entity manager. Yeah, I want to add something that uh, this this can be divided into two parts. One is for the BMC to create the inventories from uh, like uh, from MRW the machine workbook or from the BIOS. Then that is for uh, then BMC creates the inventory on DBus. The BMC web consumes this information to create the Redfish objects. Um, OpenBMC community releases. Uh, so Kurt Taylor runs the uh, release planning work group. Um, it's a bi-weekly meeting. Uh, 2.6, which came out in February of 2019, uh, was our first release as a Linux Foundation community. Um, and 2.7, which came out last month, uh, was Redfish was a big part of. Um, and 2.8 is scheduled for February of 2020. Uh, and the releases follow uh, Yocto releases uh, to a year, and it lags the Yocto release by like a month or two. And this is a screenshot of uh, the 2.7.0 tag uh, from last month. And so in the... Uh, 2.7 uh, release uh, was the following Redfish functionality. Uh, firmware update, uh, inventory logging, uh, network partial certificates, power thermal, uh, state management. So this is uh, uh, the power operations, um, power on, reboot, um, and then also uh, BMC Reboot, which isn't on here, and then time management and uh, user management. And this is a, a screenshot of uh, the recently merged uh, SSL certificate uh, page on the web interface using the uh, Redfish API, the certificate uh, schema. Um, and for 2.8, uh, working on getting the rest of the sensors so that the sensor page on the GUI can be moved over to Redfish, uh, working on uh, the rest of certificate management, LDAP, uh, LED, uh, multiple firmware uh, support so that the, the firmware panel on the, on the web interface can also be moved over. Um, and some of these uh, certificates, LDAP, uh, LED, uh, it's either merged and master or up for review now. And those are all things IBM's working on. Uh, I know Intel is planning on or is working on uh, event service, uh, telemetry service, subscription collection, and virtual media. Uh, the telemetry? Yes. 
Yes, there's several telemetry models out there. Okay, so you're not using Redfish, uh, the proposal that we talked about yesterday. I'm, I'm not sure if you. Um, so, so basically, metric definitions and report definitions. Are you following the standard Redfish schema, or yes? Okay, this is standard Redfish. And what is what is what is your backend service for this? Um, I, James, can you speak more? This came from Ed. I. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what okay. Ed's plans are for it. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, and so this is uh, the LDAP uh, web interface page. Uh, this is up for review now, and this is using the uh, LDAP Redfish schema, uh, which most of the support is merged into BMC Web. Um, the 2.7 release, it was... Uh, mainly properties that were already in the, the Redfish schema. Um, so today the the web interface and OpenVMC tool uh, use both the, the Dbust uh, REST API and Redfish. Um, and we need a few uh, things added to the, the Redfish schema uh, so that we could move uh, the web interface Face completely over to Redfish, which is what we plan to do. Um, things like uh, SNMP, which is not in the spec currently, and then multiple uh, firmware image uh, Redfish support, which we were able to get into the spec and is in that 2019.2 spec. And we'll continue to upstream uh, properties to Redfish. Um, and eventually we'll uh, move away from exposing the the Dbus API uh, directly to to customers, and the the web interface will be completely Redfish. Um, this is the Redfish data model. Um, you can see the service root at slash Redfish slash v1, uh, and root can be read uh, unauthenticated. Um, this is a, a hypermedia API, uh, so all resources are, are linked from the service route. Uh, you can see the, the service route, you can see sessions and accounts, schemas. There would also be a certificate service, um, update service. And then um, from the service route, you can see... Uh, links to uh, the three major uh, collections in Redfish. Uh, computer system, which is, uh, think of it as the logical view of the system as seen from the OS. So this is uh, memory processors. Uh, chassis, which is the a physical view of the box, the, the sheet metal. It's fans, power supply, sensors, uh, power and thermal. And then uh, system managers are, in our case, uh, BMCs. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, but these there's links from all these different uh, resources. So there's a, a managed by link from the, the computer system to the manager, and then there would be one the other way as well. Um, Redfish and BMC Web support both uh, token-based uh, authorization and basic authorization. Um, and this is a, a Witherspoon system. Um, I'm using uh, Postman here. Uh, it's an API development environment. And uh, basic authorizations uh, fine for a, a quick curl command um, where latency is not an issue. But uh, since a new session is created uh, every time, it's not ideal for multiple calls. And so this is uh, basic authorization using um, 
Postman and then basic authorization using uh, curls basic authorization. And you can also do this uh, by passing the username and password as part of the URI. Um, token based authorization. Uh, this is recommended if you're going to do multiple calls. Um, and it, this requires that the client post to the uh, sessions collection with their username and password uh, to get the token. Um, you can post to the sessions collection uh, slash redfish slash v1 slash service slash sessions uh, unauthorized and get the, the token if you pass a, a correct username and password. Um, and this is using the, the token to uh, do a get to the um, power schema. And you can see things like a power limit uh, and um, power consumed watts. Um, to see which sessions, uh, slash redfish, slash v1, slash session service, slash sessions. Uh, and this is the, the session um, I'm using. And you can see uh, the user. And if you wanted to delete this session or log out, you would uh, do a delete to the um, URI uh, listed in the odata.id. Um, so how simple is uh, REST using JSON? Uh, this is a Python 3 example, uh, five lines of code uh, using token authorization. And this is getting the uh, system model and this isn't much different than calling the Google Maps or Twitter or Facebook API. Uh, common Redfish properties. Um, all resources have uh, the schema and version, and this is in the uh, odata.type. Uh, odata.id is the URI of the resource. Um, ID is a unique ID, uh, names a human uh, friendly name, and then uh, status uh, has three uh, properties. Uh, state, uh, this can be one of 10 different states, uh, disabled, enabled, um, updating. Um, health uh, can be three different uh, values, uh, okay, critical, warning, and then health rollup, which represents the health of the resource and all its children. Uh, links, um, they contain uh, references to related resources. So kind of mentioned uh, from BMC, there's a manager for chassis link to the chassis, and then from the chassis, there's a managed by link to the BMC. Um, and actions, uh, actions are used for things like booting the system, um, rebooting the BMC. Uh, oh. And OEM is used to uh, separate vendor extensions from uh, the standard. Um, this is the, the service route. Uh, you can see the um, odata.type, which tells you that it's the uh, service route schema. It's version 1.5. Uh, and you see links to the account service, certificate service, uh, links to the chassis and manager collection. And uh, Redfish separated the uh, protocol um, from the data model, and this uh, Redfish version is the uh, protocol of Redfish being used. Um, this is the uh, system resource. Um, OpenBMC hard-coded the system and manager IDs, uh, 
and we currently only support one system and one manager. Um, power state is not a writable property. Uh, so you would use the um, computer system dot reset to boot or reboot the system. You would do a post to that action. And that's what this uh, slide is showing, uh, doing a post to the uh, system resource actions, uh, computer system reset uh, and reset type on. Uh, the third major uh, collection type is chassis. Uh, this is the chassis resource. Um, in here, you can see links to the, the computer system, links to the manager. Uh, you can see the uh, links to power and thermal, uh, and you can see the, the status with its health, health roll-up state. Um, and the diagram on the left kind of shows that power and thermal are both under chassis uh, and fans and temperatures are part of thermal, voltages, power supplies are part of power. Um, manager on the left is the manager collection. Um, as you can see, there's only uh, one member, um, manager slash BMC. Uh, again, uh, manager and system IDs are hard coded. Um, and then on the right is the manager resource. Uh, you can see links to the um, Ethernet interfaces, uh, an action to reboot the BMC. Uh, you can see the firmware version, uh, date and time. Um, I only. Uh, skim the surface of what's out there for redfish. I uh, really encourage you to look at the, the documentation and play around with uh, OpenVMC's uh, redfish implementation. Any questions? Uh, you, you just mentioned the uh, BMC web GUI will all use the Redfish API, that means all the web GUI data are reading and the right data with the Redfish API. Is that what, what, you, what I see? Uh, so the web interface uses both uh, the uh, externally exposed DBus API as well as uh, the Redfish API, depending on uh, which panel. Um, so for example, uh, user management, uh, uses the Redfish API um, while uh, things still like inventory and sensors are still using the uh, exposed DBus API. Uh, eventually, we'll move uh, the web interface all over to uh, Redfish, but we're still um, missing some of the key uh, schemas needed to do that. Okay. Uh, so in future, you plan to move to move all to the Redfish API, but I think uh, in web GUI there are some special requirements. For example, uh, we need a dashboard on the uh, on the web on one page, web page, and this dashboard will need all the inventory summary or status from different subcomponent like storage, CPU, memory. That that's cross lots of Redfish schema, so. Is, is that the efficiency through Redfish API can be promised? But, but with with the DBus DBus API, you can you can certainly or REST API, you can certainly send one request to the backend and get all the data, right? Um, so for things that aren't in the Redfish schemas today, we'll continue to upstream. Uh, them into Redfish so that we can move the web interface over to Redfish. And the reason uh, we want to do that is we eventually want to, to turn off the 
um, exposing the DBS API. Mm -hmm. So when you say that uh, you are going to turn off the exposing the DBS API, but the Redfish is going to use the DBS internally, right? Yeah, Red Redfish uses uh, DBS using the the object mapper to first just, find where the service is, and then yeah. make a call to that service to get the properties, and then expose those properties on right. Redfish. So you're just going to mask those to the external inter external interfaces so dbus won't be exposed outside but redfish will still use the yes same yes okay. so we'll just turn off exposing uh dbus externally to users yeah so that'll be nice like one way yep did you say if bios attribute modification was included in 27 or 28 or where was that in the roadmap uh, for Redfish? Yeah. Um, we support BIOS today, but I don't know if it's the whole... The We support the BIOS schema today in BMC Web, but I'm not sure it's the whole the whole uh, schema yet. I think we're still missing some properties. So that wasn't on the list for 2.8 either, but some of it's there today. So in version 2.7, uh, you mentioned firmware update, uh, multiple image firmware update. Uh, do you mean uh, the host firmware update or the BMC? Uh, it includes both. Okay. And uh, the other question was, uh, you had some uh, common properties of Redfish. Are those kind of mandatory or just uh, odata.id and data type are mandatory um, for a schema. Yeah, I think the only uh, mandatory ones are the uh, odata.type, odata.id, and odata.context. Okay. Uh, most uh, properties in Redfish are optional. So when you disable the dbus API, won't you need uh, to? E exposing it yeah, exposing, to customers. Yeah, so the plan is to only use Redfish API, correct? Redfish, uh, yes, or yeah. so, uh, IPMI. So my, my question then, when you want to add something new to OpenBMC that is not part of the standard, will you have to wait until it's been approved by the standard then, or what's the plan there? Um, yes. Uh, so if you want to add something new to to OpenBMC that's not in the, the Redfish standard, it would be uh, creating that that interface in OpenBMC, working with the uh, Redfish group to get that interface or something uh, similar added to Redfish. Okay, thanks. Uh, this is still a ways away. <laughs> Could we use vendor extensions in the meantime, though, to resolve that? Um, there is. Yeah, I think a lot of this still needs to be worked out. Quite common, other companies put it in OEM space and then it put into the, into the standard, then, then they'll submit a proposal to, to suck it into the standard. Yeah, it just gets tricky because you support that OEM. Yeah, it, yeah, it's hard to ever get rid of the OEM interface, too. Yeah. So that is the downside of doing that. So Are I think we definitely want to first upstream and start working through that process. Yeah, that's always better. Uh, so we were recently uh, at a Redfish workshop uh, with Jeff Otter and a couple of other the Redfish folks, and this question did come up. Um, they suggested uh, they do like to see some things be proposed as OEM first, and then when they see that it's useful, then they will suck it into the standard. But they're all, they're also happy to uh, you know for us to propose something for OpenBMC to propose something and and to work together to to bring that feature into the specification. 
Um, but the goal of OpenBMC is to adhere to, to the specification. So. So in your uh, 2.8 release, you mentioned the multiple firmware update. Can you explain what are the multiple firmware update would be supported, like a BIOS upgrade, a PSU firmware upgrade, or? Uh, so currently in Redfish, um, you can uh, update uh, the both the the host firmware as well as the the BMC firmware, uh, but you cannot, for example, uh, switch to your backup image. And so those are things that are going to be supported in the 2.8. Uh, so Redfish in that 2019.2 spec that's uh, up for review now and includes support for multiple uh, firmware images. So things like you can change which image is the primary, you can move it to the backup and things like that. So that should be supported by BMC as well in the back end, right? So yeah, it's su it's supported. It's supported now in the back end. Oh, so is? this is this is using the new Redfish uh, spec to support this in in uh, BMC web. And when you do the BMC update, do we do the whole image started to make, or like we can do the partly uh, read uh, read only file system? A uh, whole image. Whole image. Yep. So it'll wipe off my persistent data as well. Uh, we have a way to persist data across uh, firmware updates. All right.